What is good? We're back and we're ready to roll. Little stew finder, not as good as stew. Hurts my voice to get this this in the stew register. Yeah, doing <laughs> stew and then doing the Chris Berman. The red. In the gut. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we're back. We, we just hit a little two round mock. Now we're going to spend some time talking about some names you need to know in this upcoming rookie class that maybe didn't make it into that mock. We talked about some that just missed the cut that'll be in there. We're not going to talk about those guys. Go check that show out. Be sure to like, subscribe, uh, review all that jazz pod or YouTube, wherever you're at. <laughs> Hook your boys up with Preferably that. Preferably both. Preferably both. Um, so want to hit on some guys today. I mean, you guys are cute and all, but I want to. We're gonna hit on some studs. Um, so, Austin, hit us with a name that we need to know about that maybe isn't necessarily going anywhere in the first or second round in, in rookie mocks right now. Uh, that that we need to know about. Have you guys heard of Kendall Milton, the running back for Georgia? He's dude. He's one of my favorite late late running backs in this class, man. I feel like he's not getting the hype he deserves, and. It, it's kind of bothering me, so I'm going to yap about him today. I'm going to try and sell you guys, everybody listening to the pod, watching the video, on why Kendall Milton is legit, why he is a solid running back, the truth about Kendall Milton. So, man, he had he had almost 800 rushing yards this past year, 14 touchdowns for Georgia, right? So he's playing against very, very good defenses. This isn't just, you know, any, any random 14 touchdowns against garbage competition and and for, like that always matters to me the fact that these players are dominating good collegiate defenses that really really matters a lot in, in my evaluations personally he was Kendall Milton was first in SEC in yards per carry in 2022 at 7.0 wildly impressive he, Kendall mm. Milton was second in the SEC in yards per carry in 2023 at 6.53 okay so the fact that he was that efficient in back-to-back -back seasons kind of shows me that he has good vision it wasn't an accident. It wasn't a fluke. He did it back-to-back -back years. Uh, spent four years at Georgia. And keep this in mind, man. Milton improved annually in rushing attempts, rushing yards, and rushing touchdowns. Okay, so that gradual progress, while still being wildly efficient, that's what we love to see. And having true bell cow size at six foot one, 220 pounds, that's not a bad thing. You're never going to be mad about that. He's almost near identical size to someone like Joe Mixon. He's had a pretty good career. I'm not saying he's going to be the next Joe Mixon by any means. I'm just saying, man, like he's he's going to be durable. He He's going to be able to, to his body's going to be able to hold up. And, uh, you know, maybe that explains why that Kendall Milton scored 13 rushing touchdowns in the past nine games. Maybe a lot of it has to do with his size. I would love to see Milton utilized more in the passing game, right? That's one thing that we didn't necessarily see. Um, he only hauled in four receptions uh, in 12 games this year, right? Something we don't we don't love to see. Uh, but I would say that Millen explodes after he puts his foot in the ground, man, and he just cuts and he goes. He's 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 just this big running back, and in my opinion, I don't think he should have as quick of feet as he does. So uh, he he's an aggressive runner. You turn on the tape, you watch the film. He's He's uh he's been phenomenal in the pat in his final five games in college, 104 yards, two touchdowns versus fifth ranked FSU, uh, two touchdowns against eighth ranked Alabama, 156 yards, two touchdowns against Georgia Tech, uh, 66 yards and a touch against 18th ranked Tennessee, and the final game, 139 yards, two touchdowns against ninth ranked Ole Miss. Man, so. I mean, it, great production. What have you done for me lately? A lot. I think there's so much to like about this kid. So I, I don't know if I sold y'all a little bit more on Kendall Milton, but he he's he's worth the dart throw in the third or fourth round, wherever he's fallen to you, man. Yeah, I mean, like you said, big, big, bruising, physical, seems like a fairly no-nonsense kind of runner, kind of puts the foot in the ground and goes. Is that, is that what you were alluding to there? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, looks looks like a projected forty in the high four fives, but you know, big big physical frame there. So that's maybe not necessarily what he leans on per se. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Milton Milton certainly is. You know, I, I don't know where they have him projected right now in in the NFL draft. Right now, it looks like seventh round uh, for Kendall Milton. But I mean, it's going to be late. Yeah, 
Yeah, but definitely somebody to keep on the radar. I like that. I don't hate that. Playing big big time college ball and has been pretty productive. The receiving uh chops maybe not necessarily what you want to see, but hey, it is what it is. Uh you know, I, I always look at it as I don't think a lot of these guys can't catch. They just weren't asked to catch. I feel like if you're an athlete at that level, that that target threshold thing drains me. Hate it. Um, you know, but eighty three percent of the time. 83% of the time it works <laughs> that, every time. That's real. No, that's yeah. real. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's but it, you, I feel like you also have to use context. Like Milton wouldn't be a guy that I would necessarily put up there with that I, you know, would be I like, think a guy like you put up there would be Ka- well, well, Kenny Walker Kenny was Walker. the last guy I caped for with that this was a dumb this was a dumb thing to and like, oh, look at that. Kenny Walker can catch. It's crazy. Um, so, you know, if you hear us talking about that on the show, that just goes back to the rookie you know, when everybody was like, yeah, but, and I'm like, yeah, but nothing. Like, there's no way you can tell me this guy can't catch a football. This is ridiculous. They just didn't throw to him. It wasn't like he, they threw a bunch at Wake Forest or threw to anybody else at Michigan yeah. State. Don't, they don't just, he, don't. they just didn't throw to the running backs. Like that's the context that you needed. Kenny How do you Walker throw to the running catch. back in the slow mesh offense? <laughs> you don't, <laughs> uh, but good for him. And, and Kenny Walker's been crushing. So Kendall Milton, the first name you need to know here, uh, Matt, you want to go next or you want me to take the, uh, uh, I'll go ahead. Okay. Uh, so I'll talk about the guy we're both going to talk about here, and that is the diminutive Malik Washington. Mm-hmm. So just now he's 5'8", but he's 192, so that mm-hmm. boy thick. Boy thick up. He's going to be a slot receiver. I think mm-hmm. he can play a little bit on the outside, but I just don't know how he's going to handle press because he wasn't asked to beat press much as a um, pass catcher. Now, a tra- again, this is an older guy as well, too. He's a fifth-year senior. He's a grad transfer from Northwestern. Can't be good. So, um, I mean, the problem with Northwestern is, can, can you, I mean, I think the last good Northwestern quarterback was Mike Kafka, who is now an offensive coordinator in the NFL. Shout out to Dan Persa. <laughs> oh, no, who was the other? Who was that kid who got drafted by the Eagles um, that people love that went Peterman? to Northwestern? I no. Know. I'll just throw that a name. Um, I'm drawing a blank. Someone on. loved him, but anyways, yeah. he he Sunfeld? was a bum, he was a bum too. Um, but anyways, so <laughs> but I just I, the thing I love most about Malik Washington is his toughness. He's tough in the yeah. route. He's tough oh, at the catch sure. point. He's tough after the catch point. I just think um, he does a great job transitioning as a runner, and he plays bigger than five eight. If you'd have told me he's six feet tall, I would have believed you. Mm-hmm. So he's got great body control, um, and he's really good at the route stem as well too. Mm-hmm. So uh, he tracks the ball well. Um, again, someone as well. Again, coming from the Shrine Bowl, who play, who uh, I believe was on the all Sh- all Shrine Bowl team from this past year, and I believe was probably the best wide receiver there. Yeah. So uh, this is a guy who's probably going to go late day two, early day three in the NFL draft. So should get some decent capital here as well too. Yeah. So it's not all about those Senior Bowl risers. The Shrine Bowl's got some risers too, and this is definitely the main one. I think Malik Washington, like you said, uh, just a just a. Just a son of a bitch, I think, all around, just to deal with. Just, yeah. uh, uh, you know, like you said, coming from Northwestern uh, to UVA, but two smart guy schools. So yeah. you like that. Yeah. You know, those, those, you can't go there if you're dumb. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but, you know. Yeah. I, th- I think, I think he had the best receiving season, one of the best receiving seasons in Virginia history. Yeah. He caught, he, he got 110 a- passes. He, he led the ACC in receiving this year. Right. He caught 110 passes for 1,426 yards and nine touchdowns. That was both the school record for, receptions and yards and that was herman moore's record so shout out to the detroit lions uh making it making it in the playoffs and old herman moore if you're if you're an og herman moore used to slay back for the uh for the detroit lions back in the day so shout out to him uh but washington absolutely came in here and slayed you remember another big east west shrine riser also wears number four not going to get the same draft capital as that guy, but kind of reminds me of a thicker Zay Flowers a little bit here. Uh, you know, not the overall speed that that Zay has. I think kind of some of the sa- similar play style and in, in how he goes about his business. I think Washington has the speed. He just doesn't have the breakaway speed. Right. He doesn't have that. Oh, my God, speed. Yeah. He's got ridiculous quickness. Yeah. Um, and the, you, that, that shows up all over his his routes and, and combinations. Um, so. You know, and he's definitely he's thicker. So like his his yak is different yeah. than and he r- than Zay's, he literally but. he literally runs like a running back after right. the catch. He just runs through arm tackles. So yeah, so I you know like I said, I, I he just seems like a real sob out of there out out there, and his play style has so much attitude to it. And I feel like you kind of see 
um, how smart he is and his quickness when he's in phase of running his routes. And then once he gets the ball in his hands, he's just a mean, he's just a mean dude. Like it, it just, it completely, the gears completely switch and he just becomes this massive, you know, like you said, he's only five, eight, but he's one ninety one ninety three. So he's, he's real tough to deal with out there with the ball in his hands, but he's also pretty like for his size, he's pretty strong in the contested area. Like he's yeah. not going to let you out bully him. Like he's uh he plays a lot bigger than he is out there. So and this isn't a Calvin Ridley. This isn't a Calvin Ridley one ninety two. This is a confirmed one ninety two. <laughs> this isn't this isn't the school bulls drink up his weight. He weighed in at one ninety two last week. So yeah, so I got you know, he's sort of a technician when the ball when he's running his route, but then when when he has the ball in his hands, he kinda turns into the kid playing I don't know what you guys called it, but we called it fumble rumble where you had the ball and everybody's trying to tackle you, and then when you get tackled, you throw it up in the air. That's not what we called it, but I'm not going to say what we called it. Smear the... Uh, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> smear yep. the other guy? Yeah, yeah. yes, so exactly. So you can't say yeah. that. But I think people call it different things all over the place. But that when he has the ball in his hands, that's what it kind of reminds me of. He's just... He's stiff-arming people. He's, he's shouldering people. He's getting away from people. He's got good quickness. He's just really hard to deal with. Uh, so I, I think Malik Washington, obviously, like you said, mostly a slot guy, um, but... After transferring, um, he played his least amount of snaps out wide this year. It was for 6.7. In 21, he played uh, 21% out wide for Northwestern. But like you said, like name the last useful quarterback coming out of Northwestern. Um, you can't really. Not like he had a terrible season at Northwestern in 22. It really wasn't bad. I don't have it in I mean, front of I me. I mean, they're, they're, they're not known for offense. Right. And then, and then they have all the controversy going on yeah. there. So add that on top of Malik Washington's a name that you absolutely need to know. Um, depending on who gets his hands on him in the, in the NFL draft, I, I feel like he could be a real problem uh, coming up here. So, uh, yeah, I, I, he, he was one on me. He was PFF's second highest rated wide receiver in this. Yeah, I, I went and looked up his PFF numbers. What was crazy about him, his A dot was tied for 435th in the country, yeah. but he had the th but he had the 33rd most deep catches mm -hmm. and the 55th most deep yards. So he just, just caught like, a lot of balls. Yeah, exactly. He was he was either catching like he was catching pop passes all the time. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I mean, that's his A dot is going to be negative two. Yeah, his A dot so, was 8.1. Yeah, his, he had 138 targets. That was fourth overall in the NCAA. He had 111 receptions. That was number one. He had 1384 yards. That was number five. Tied for 26 in TDs. That was with nine yards per reception. 12.5. So again, a slot guy. Who gets a lot of, you know, so yards per reception is getting brought down, but his deep pass numbers were really strong. Yak seventh overall. Yak per reception down a little bit because, again, yeah. 111, 111 receptions. Catch. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yards per, yards per route run, 3.15. That's tied for 12th. Most missed tackles forced in the nation with 35 and fifth most first downs. This dude was absolutely awesome this year and played with two different quarterbacks in Virginia. Virginia was not very good this well, year. Well, they had their, they had their own <laughs> they problems. Had, they did have their own <laughs> problems. But, man, what an absolute pleasure to watch out there. Um, you know, so Malik Washington's definitely... Uh, a name you need to know here. All right. Well, I'm going. I'm going to go a little, a little up more higher up, upper echelon, a little bit known guy, but pr not getting as much love as I as I think he should right now. Uh, well, I'm going Jalen McMillan. Uh, he's six one, one ninety two. He's coming out of out of uh, out of Washington at twenty two years old. Projected four three four four guy here, so potentially really good wheels. I think it's probably going to be closer to the mid four fours, upper four fours. Um, I don't think he's four three fast. Um, but he was wide receiver eight coming out of high school, according to 24-7. Uh, he was in the mock draft database right now. They got him out of third round projection. So decent draft capital, not not anything to uh, scoff at. But an injury marred 23 kind of hurt his overall production, probably hurting him not being a second round pick right now, I think, in, in my opinion. And that started, I think, week three against Michigan State, where he was having a good game. Um, just goes down, I believe, either right at the end of the – second quarter or right at the start of the third quarter on a, on a long catch. Uh, but 22 was really the impressive season and he was looking to build on that. And including the playoffs, he put together 118 targets. That was the team high 79 receptions. That was a team high 1,098 yards. So almost 1100 yards. Adunze did a little bit more than that. 13.9 uh, yards per reception. That's not terrible, especially because he's a slot nine touchdowns team high. Yak was 430. 
uh, that was team high. 16 missed tackles forced, that was team high. First downs, 54, that was team high. Um, and then without the playoffs or a bowl game in there, rather, um, I believe they were at 49 and him and Odunze were tied for the most first downs on the team. The yards per route run are 2.32. You know, you're looking at a little bit more of a of a slot play here. He's not going to be an outside wide receiver, um, but you know, eighty eighty nine point two percent in the slot in twenty two and ninety five point or ninety two point five percent in the slot at twenty two. So, uh, you know, majority of a slot player here, but he's he just has a, a a really good game about him. I mean, he's he does have a little bit more is a little bit more on the slim side. So that, uh, but you know, I, I don't really think that affects his dominance or willingness to go in the middle of the field he's really effective in there and i definitely don't think it affects his ability of of the the rack or, or being a yak guy i thought he was pretty strong in there he isn't necessarily one of those thick guys uh but he's not going to be brought down on first contact a ton of course there's times in the tape where you do see it uh but i feel like he's also shown many occasions where he's able to absorb the contact and keep it moving so he's not one of these slot guys who are real thin and and small the wind blows one direction and he just falls down uh he's usually getting after it he's certainly not scared the route tree was very diverse from him uh you can get a lot of different looks from him he can do a lot of different things uh while being a strong winner in the middle and intermediate he also can take the top off for you and get your vertical chunks you saw that time and time again um, in this Washington offense, offense with him. And I think they really missed him at parts through the 23 season. Uh, then he came back and, 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 you know, had some big plays for him in, in the bowl game or in the playoff games, rather a uh, touchdown in both of those games. Uh, but he's got the quickness and the speed. I'm not sure he has that. Oh my God level fast. Like some people were projecting four, three speed. Um, it's definitely not, you know, that immediate speed. It's definitely a little bit more built, built up. Um, but the quickness and the speed, neither do I think are oh my God level, but they're very functional with both of them and he knows how to use them really well. So Jalen McMillan's a guy that I'm, I, I've become pretty high on and I'm going to be super stoked to get as much Jalen McMillan as I can uh, in the third round here coming up in, in these rookie mocks. And I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see him tailing into the, the end of the second round in some of these drafts um, as far as rookie, rookie drafts. Uh, it seems like he could very well drift into uh the second round of the nfl drafts as well because everybody wants receivers uh polk seems like he's got the the edge on uh mcmillan right now but i think you know i think we could we could get reminded of of how good mcmillan is through this process here and and see those two guys flip-flop but a um, little bit different play style from those two guys though so uh jalen mcmillan was was a name that, that that you need to know about how about uh you got another one for us austin yeah, man, and I want to touch on McMillan really quick. I like a lot of what you said, Casey. He's actually the same exact height and weight as Stephon Diggs for what it's worth. And Stephon Diggs was the fifth-round pick, right? So we are I'll tell you what, Jalen McMillan's going to get better draft cap than that. So just something to keep in mind, man. Yeah. Like Mc, 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 McMillan and Odunze were, you know, they were a scary duo at Washington, 1,000-plus yard, receiving yards apiece in 2022. So, yeah, they're, they're, he's a fun prospect, right? Yeah, so, really, really was excited when when i once i got through five or six games of him i was like damn this is this is this is pretty solid like i said no nothing that's like holy shit but like he just is really he all all of his parts and pieces are are above average uh i would say and and the speed i think is is not on the elite level but not on the you know it's gonna it could hinder him and people are gonna be upset about it so but, you know, somebody like you, you take a guy like Troy Franklin, who has all that speed, but I don't think he moves as well as somebody like Jalen McMillan does. Uh, Jalen McMillan has a much more diverse route tree, gets in and out of things a lot better. His start stop is, I think, a lot better than, you know, he runs a he runs a way better, you know, hooker a curl than than Troy Franklin does. His hips are much more fluid than what Troy Franklin does. Not saying he's better than Troy Franklin, obviously, uh, but, you know, just. I was watching him. I was like, man, coming from watching Troy Franklin to watching McMillan, I think the fluidness between the two was I, I like McMillan uh, a good bit better than uh, as far as that part of their game um, than, than somebody like a Troy Franklin. So uh, Austin, hit us with, with something yep. else here. Yeah, man. So final guy I'm going to yap about today, Dylan Johnson. He's someone who's quickly climbing up my personal rankings. 
Man, 1,385 total yards and 16 touchdowns for Washington in 2023. Washington had a lot of good players this year, man. Uh, Multiple seasons with 48-plus receptions for Dylan Johnson. Dude, we'd love to see it. I mean, come on. Who who, who doesn't love, you know, a running back who's catching – 50 plus balls back to back seasons uh early declare to you you know you can't succeed in the nfl if you're not an early declare obviously don't yell at me in the youtube comments <laughs> i'm just joking i'm just joking uh six foot 218 pounds he's he, so dylan johnson is a scary combination of power plus receiving right so he, he was and keep this in mind man like dylan johnson was literally playing on one leg in the national championship mm-hmm. that is an accurate representation of just how much heart that dylan johnson Johnson has and he picks up the blitz exceptionally well Uh, I I thoroughly enjoyed his tape right and uh, he had some notable performances throughout his collegiate career he like I I love talking about some of these prospects games against ranked teams because I think that's what matters most in in a lot of ways right dominating again these top tier collegiate defenses you're never going to be mad at it, right? Like Dylan Johnson crushed fifth-ranked Oregon. I mean, 159 yards, two touchdowns, 132 yards and a touch against Utah, uh, 267 yards and four touchdowns against 20th-ranked USC. I, I mean, video game numbers. He had 110 yards and a touch against eighth-ranked Oregon. I mean, man, the production was there. The pro- production I- exceeded my expectations by a lot. Uh, and, and right now I have Dylan Johnson as my RB7 in the 2024 rookie class. I don't know if I'm a little too bullish on him. I, I got to do even more research, right? And I've done a good amount, but man, he's uh, he's someone I feel like I feel like he could even get into that like RB6, RB5 range in this class for me in my rankings, right? Uh, I, I'm well aware of Dylan Johnson's impressive contact balance, uh, receiving resume, and his high upside. Uh, he's climbing up my rankings very quickly, and I just think that he should be on everyone's radar. Yeah, we, we, we like Dylan Johnson a lot. Um, I'll be interested to see if he uh, if he sticks with the hoodie under the pads in, in, the, in the NFL. Mm-hmm. A, lot, a lot of Washington guys go hoodie under pads, but Johnson always had it. Oh, yeah, every time. Yeah, that was it. Was uh, definitely you could a gutting loss for Washington in that national championship to not have Dylan Johnson. Uh, he tried to give it a go and and couldn't couldn't I mean, make it through yeah. that game. Yeah. Um, but like you said, show, showed a lot of heart there. Uh, we we and me and JB did a did one of these, and we'll be doing more and more with with more guys. We'll talk about some of the guys that we're going to hit here as we're moving forward with these type of shows. Uh, but we we talked a little Dylan Johnson. We talked Jacob Cowing. In one of those, we we talked about uh, Jalen Wright, and so we've we've hit a couple of these. So so go back and, and check some of those guys out. But you know, always nice to hear somebody else's opinion on on Dylan Johnson. I, I, I he's got to get some love, and and once again, just providing that 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 third round is going to have a ton of value in it in your rookie drafts. Um, so I you know I know don't go you don't need to get willy nilly with those picks and throwing them around because I think there's going to be a lot of talent. Last year we saw it, and people smashed in in the third round. Um, and I think we're going to see it again this year because there's a lot of talent. It might not be top tier talent or ones that we view as top tier talent, but then all of a sudden they're in the the top thirty of you know dynasty wide receivers. So, Austin, did you have anybody else? Uh, no, man. But I just kind of want to make a, a statement. Sure. And it's episodes like this that really matter. And you might say, like, come on, man. Like, are are, are some of these guys really going to hit these fifth, sixth, seventh round picks? And and the short answer is. Yeah, there, there's going to be a lot of guys that hit, and 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 we look back to 2022. We got guys that were, and I'm going to talk about a few players really quick that were late second round dynasty rookie picks, third round or fourth round, right? Like just just late rookie picks is is what I'm elaborating on real quick. And it's it's guys like you know Trey McBride. I remember him going super late second round of of dynasty super flex rookie drafts. You got guys like Brian Robinson, right? Romeo Dobbs. These are some of the big hits from like 2022. And then even most recently, last year in 2023, I remember we saw guys like Tajay Spears going super late second. I even saw him early Thirds. third in some leagues. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Josh Downs, man, he was he was a probably a mid-third. Uh, another guy that checks the box, of course, is Poka Nakua. Not bad. Tank uh, And then... Yeah, and then t- right, Tank Dell, exactly. Uh, Tyron you know, Williams, like, you can throw in there as well too. From twenty two, from twenty two, yep. and uh, Jaden Reed, man. Like, so there's a lot of good players out there. You just got to do your research. 
you got to be knowledgeable and you got to get a little lucky too sometimes mm-hmm. i'm not going to lie like it's 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 even if you know everything doesn't matter man it, it's still difficult right it, and th- i'm just getting at these episodes matter these yeah. players matter it, it's also not just about like the long term hit of those guys it's about getting a bump to be able to move mm-hmm. on from those guys if you want like there's a lot of you know there's other guys in there like that had some some bumps along i don't i didn't plan to talk about any of these guys so i don't have any great examples it, but like aiden o'connell you know if you wanted to you could have at least gotten some value for aiden o'connell in a trade to help you do something else maybe it's nothing crazy but like somebody might be like ah you know i'll i'll, I'll take aiden o'connell in the beginning you know what, what what could happen or when he was a starter had a couple of good games you might he might get you over the edge in a trade in a super flex league so it's not even just about necessarily you know all these guys smashing for the rest of their lives it's getting a little value bump from some of these guys in in, in you know the fourth round which i loved i loved uh xavier hutchinson last year he didn't do anything for you but you know still like the guy we, there's there's still time uh, you know if i had a shallow bench i'm cutting him but if not he's he's kind of he's chilling uh but you know tucker craft you know uh, was a tight end who you know was was in the third fourth rounds and a lot michael wilson still has a really good he showed you mm-hmm. that he could play he was third fourth round um, in a lot of those, uh, C rod at the end of the year for the Redskins, uh, the commanders played yeah. pretty well. He was like a fourth round. So, you know, will he get another shot? I don't know, but he, he wasn't bad in the last week of the season. Uh, so you're right, Austin. Um, you know, this, this stuff can matter. It's, it's fun to do. This is a fun part of it, getting deep in there and knowing about your third and fourth round picks. So you don't just devalue them. Um, and I, you know, don't get me wrong. I'll use a third and a fourth to, to do some stuff in a hurry, but I'll also be acquiring that. Like usually, I'm trying to acquire those in trades. If I can, I get the can I get the fourth from from next year that nobody cares about. Can I get the third from next year that nobody cares about? All of a sudden, I got three or four, and I can either make those picks or use it to move around, kind of in the draft. So, so they're always they're always valuable, and, and you can find stuff there. Matt, you got you got another uh, name to know for us here. So uh, this was a name from our boy Riley, mm-hmm. and this is a guy who may not probably won't get drafted uh it's tyrone tracy out of purdue Mm. so he's a converted wide receiver uh he was actually i was second leading pass catcher back in 2019 510 210 confirmed but this guy reminds me a lot of like a steve slayton like the slasher accelerates quickly plenty of straight line speed um he runs well through contact he's got a really good jump cut i think he's got plus vision and obviously the pass catching's there so um i mean he caught 60 passes as a as a true freshman at iowa so um that's that, i mean that's saying a lot i mean at iowa catching sure was it? um but no i was impressed by him because he and he's still learning to play he's still learning to play the position so sorry he cut 66 targets he had 36 catches but that's still a second on the team um but i mean he's still learning to play the position last year was his first year as a full-time running back and then this year he took over as a starter for purdue um but you turn the tape on this guy who's interesting like i said he just has that get up and go i love his acceleration he's got plenty of straight line speed obviously he's a wide receiver and obviously he can catch the ball out of the backfield so i think someone he could make and make a name on special teams and then work his way into a larger role because of the fact that he's already there. So it could just take one injury for him to, to start seeing third down work and then third down work turns into, you know what I mean? So it just kind of snowballs there, but definitely an interesting name to watch. And obviously the very later part of your drafts. Hit us with the name one more time. Tyrone Tracy Jr. The third. Got to gotta watch out for him. So, you know, that... You never know, man. Those guys, kind of guys can can certainly hey, pop. We see it every year with these like late round running. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he's I'm not saying that he's Isaiah Pacheco. Yeah, I'm not saying he's Isaiah Pacheco, but I mean certainly certainly seem looks will he pretty get a good combine invite? Me. Yes, he did so, get a combine invite. So if he goes there and, and and tests pretty well, he could even get another jump. So just a yeah. just a name to watch out for. Yeah. I like that. He, he he was at the Hula Bowl and then went to the Shrine Bowl. Nice. One other guy I just wanted to touch on real quick before we get out of here was uh ricky persall having a good senior bowl we talked a lot of shine bowl he, he came in and you know i, I know I, we threw a live you know talked malik washington talked Jalen mcmillan 
Persall may be a slot at the next level as well. Um, he, he wasn't necessarily strictly slot. In 23, he played 56% in the slot. And in 22, he played 71% in the slot. Seems like at least he will be a slot to start with at the next level. I don't think he, he can play outside some. Um, but, you know. How, pardon my French, but how the fuck did Herm Edwards mess up that offense so bad <laughs> with Jaden Daniels, Daniels, Rashad White, Ricky Pearsall? He had all these weapons and they right. did and they the, did nothing. Dysfunctional for sure. But a, but a transfer from ASU to Florida, 6'1", 192 pounds, went down to the Senior Bowl and in the lot, Lad McConkey vein was just destroying people in one on ones. The speed was on display. Is, is the speed elite? No, but like his functional speed and the, his play style and, and the, his route running ability looked like it was all fully on display. It's all throughout the tape when you watch it. Um, Graham Mertz was out there throwing the ball from him, but you know, they, they, you know, was, he's fine. But I mean, you know, Anthony Richardson and him had had a decent connection as well. So maybe you could get 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 a little Persall love for the Colts and and a reunite reunited uh, front of Anthony Richardson and Persall. Uh, I think that would be a, a you know a potentially a good fit, although they have downs. So has anyone had a brighter first game and then just stunk the rest of their career more than Graham Mertz? <laughs> just came out through five touchdowns against Illinois. This guy's the finally the truth for what Wisconsin, Wisconsin and yeah. then does nothing. Does nothing. But yeah, I wanted to wanted to throw a purse all out there. I, I like his game. I've I've uh, I've gotten through two or three all twenty two games of him. Um, and then just, you know, on the rise from the senior bowl. So definitely a name you need to know to look out for. So we're getting into the third round here. I got a lot of fun guys. Who you got? I got two senior bowl guys. First of all, I don't have anything written down about, but had a great week. Senior bowl was Roman Wilson. Right. Who we just saw in the national championship game. Mm -hmm. And I love, I don't know what it is, but I love Michigan wide receivers. I love Donald Peoples Jones. I love Nico Collins. And I think Roman Wilson is in that same vein as those three guys. So I'm not saying he's Nico Collins, but I'm, he's somewhere in between, maybe somewhere between Nico go in dpj so and then we can't be a podcast without me talking about a penn state player so we only have one this year so be thankful so uh we've got theo johnson at tight end so um making some noise i think he could he's gonna he's gonna be a top five tight end i think he could go anywhere from tight end two to tight end five they're saying he could run four four at he could run four four at the combine and at 66 257 that would be a moving so um somewhere in the 44 so the Penn State guys always test well at the combine um but i think Theo Johnson can play anywhere on the field he can line up outside he can line up inside they had him playing h back so um he's been he was a great safety valve the last two years for the for the uh Penn State quarterbacks as well too and he's physical after the catch reliable hands so I I think he's a tight end who can see the field early just because he can kind of do everything so strange got that draft cap so can yeah and he's better than strange and strange yeah. went to the end of the second round so yeah yeah I, I like it N another uh another tight end thrown in there so next time next time I do this we're, we're going to be na names you need to know we might dive into Persall a little more but Roman Wilson will definitely be a name that'll be on that yeah. list that we got to get to Javon Baker had a really good senior bowl and is somebody that I want to dive more into I haven't broke the film down necessarily on him but he's getting a lot of love so uh like I said be sure to like subscribe and all that jazz so you get this coming right to your little fingertips so you don't miss anything because we're going to break down more of those guys as we get along in this manner here. Uh, Jamari Thrash uh, is is kind of rising up some boards. Not 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 James Thrash's son. Uh, thought for sure he was. He is not. Uh, but he looked from Louisville a transfer. Uh, Jerry Rice's kid. Jerry had, Rice's had a good, kid. Senior Bowl. Had a, you know. So but he he seems like a non. He seems like a non separator kind of guy. Yeah. So definitely some guys we want to we're going to be doing this uh, all up all throughout the offseason uh, names to know that n aren't necessarily the big household first and maybe even second round like guys like Baker and Persall and Roman Wilson might venture into the second round of rookie drafts, uh, but they seem to be certainly kind of fringe guys right now. So uh, I talked about Malachi Corley in the last one I did with with JB. So didn't want to feel like we were leaving him out, but love that guy as well. Um, and I think he had a decent senior bowl. So. A uh, lot of lot of good coverage out there. There was a tight end uh, from uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now that had a good Senior Bowl uh, from maybe Kansas or Kansas State. Oh Jaheim yeah, I know you're talking about um, what's his name? Riley's asking about him. I watched him. He was meh. Yeah, I don't. I've been been not been been no wait, been no. It was somebody, this was something different. Uh, well, anyway, uh, <laughs> we have no idea what we're talking about. So. Uh, I didn't know who he was really, uh, so definitely need to check that out. 
Uh, but yeah, man, be sure to keep it locked in here. Keep coming back. Uh, we got plenty more of these to do because like Austin said, a lot of this stuff can be very important and it can be, you know, guys who got, you know, downs, maybe he didn't blow it up for you all year long, but there's certainly a value bump there. Guys who got, uh, you know, Puka Nakua obviously just got, you know, a top five wide receiver all of a sudden on their hands. You know, guys who, who picked up uh, Tank Dell got a really good, you know, receiver on their hands. You know, Jalen or uh, Tajay Spears, like you said, um, th there's a whole lot of potential there next year. So um, there is a lot of importance uh, through these through these rounds here. Um, and, you know, last year we did this and we had we did the mock with all the experts and everybody told you that after after you get in the third round of these things, you shouldn't be drafting anybody but running backs. And that couldn't be more fucking wrong, man. Like, <laughs> so just want to remind everybody that don't don't fall into these traps. What don't draft the tight ends because, you know, you'll just get in better more the second year. Like, I don't even know anybody who's selling Michael Mayer at this point. And he didn't break out. It's really hard to get these these tight ends from these people. And don't just draft running backs in the third and fourth round. I don't I'm not I'm not against it at, by any means, but if you feel strongly and you did the work about somebody, draft that motherfucker. Like there was somebody right now smashed on Puka in so many drafts and really turned their t like one guy in the third round can really turn you around from being potentially looking down the barrel of maybe rebuilding to all of a sudden I got a guy that just all is back in the top 10 of wide receivers and I can either trade him or hang on to him. And if you hit two of those guys in a, in a draft. Watch out! In one of the drafts, I was I had the I had the one I had my own pick at one hundred two, and I drafted Puka, and I won the championship. Now, granted, I did fleece someone for AJ Brown in that league as well too, but right, um, Puka definitely helped, and Kyron Williams on that team as well too. So, right, a guy, you know, a running back I did draft in every third and fourth round in, in the year before, and it didn't pay off, and I just kept him because it's patience yeah. over everything in Dynasty. You can't. I know if you don't break out in in year one, everyone's going to throw numbers at you of thresholds that they didn't hit. If you believe in a guy. Don't just throw him away for nothing. I thought Kyron was a good player, so I believed him and kept him around. And, and he helped me in any championship or playoffs that I was in. He was on that team. And I could and guarantee... He was, and he was starting on that team. Right, I could guarantee... And, he, and, he, and the ones that I was still rebuilding, I sold Kyron. You know, and I, I even probably sold him a little cheap in the middle. I sold him way too cheap in the middle of the season. I sold him for a two in Godwin at the time. The league was mad that we got that much for him. So, you know, it's just there's a lot of different ways things can go. Don't get bent out. You know, all the Quentin Johnson drafters. I know, you know, some people are, are so glad that cause he stunk and there's no way like the, the book is not over on Quentin Johnston by any means. Like he was kind of developmental in general. Like he wasn't polished. He wasn't ready to go. He got thrust into a situation and, and probably didn't need to necessarily be there. Uh, but you know, I, I know everybody just loves to tell you that if, if, if it doesn't work out right away, then these guys are trash and there's no way they can be any good. And there's so many stories that are just untrue. And yeah, if you look at the percentages, you're going, well, you're playing these percentages. And that's the whole point of analytics is to play the percentages. I get it. But outliers win championships, uh, you know, in in in, you know, a lot of cases. Um, so. You certainly do want to play percentages. I'm all for playing percentages. You can't have a, a team full of outliers, but some outliers will turn your team around uh, in a hurry. So uh, you got anything else to add, Austin, before we get out of here? If I could end it with one final statement, it's just always remember to draft for value and trade for need, man. It's simple. Yeah, I mean, it certainly, it certainly can be simple like that depending on your league like sometimes if you know it's not the most active league then maybe you need to look at it in a little bit different light but for the most part i think that's really really good advice um so you, you good matt matt's good we will catch you next time on the ffd here we very much appreciate you go here to like subscribe comment below all that jazz we got live shows uh coming at you about every other week so you know be sh if, if for no other reason subscribe for that so that comes right to your little fingertips on that little bell in your youtube there and you guys can join those either in the chat ask your questions as we're drafting because you know that's half the fun of trade questions and you know this and that on the live shows you get to kind of interact with us so um or you can join the patreon five dollar holler you get in the discord that, that that's straight to us Plus, we do a lot of we're doing slow mocks and we're building our ADP back up. We had a nice ADP last year and we're building our ADP back up. We're already three or four 
Drafts Deep uh, from January into February, uh, which is always, always, always a really good thing to just get a temperature on where values are of everybody and see how it's ebbing and flowing uh, through the offseason. So anyway, we very much appreciate you guys and we'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>